Hello, Rochelle Wise, you made it today. New Zealand, you are always number one. Maybe because New Zealand is the first to see the sun all over the world. You are always ahead of everybody else. Welcome, Rochelle White. Ravelle, welcome. Innocent, welcome. Boomig Benro, welcome. Nice to see you here. Daniel Atsenga. Omonike, welcome, welcome, welcome. Bide me, welcome. Theophilus Mui, welcome. Nkiro, Jima Du is here. Welcome, everyone. Nice to see you people today. Well, we keep on talking about the levels of truth. It has been a profound week, I think, I would say. I, I, I must say that it has been a profound topic as well. I'm so happy that God led me to treat this topic. Because it's just after I started treating the topic that I discovered that, hey, wait a minute. I've not been hearing people talk about truth at all. He said, nobody is teaching these things. And is, this is so necessary because this is absolutely the foundation of our faith. It is the very foundation of our faith. Truth is the same as God. Light, the same as God. Love, the same as God. And um, when people don't talk about it, it's as good that we don't talk about God. So I'm so happy and I thank God that he led me. I'm so grateful that God led me to treat this topic. But I'm going to, because of what I'm discovering, that this is really helping a lot of people and this is a rare topic and it's not something that you get to talk about every day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time and I'm really going to dissect and digest this topic with you. So today we are going to thoroughly uh, digest the fourth level of, uh, of, of truth. Now, going forward, let me remind you of what we already uh, covered, the ground we already covered. The first level of truth, look who came! Pro David. Do you people still remember who is Pro David? Most of you don't remember anymore because, you know, many new people we have here, but this is one of the most active person he used to be on this platform one, at a time. So Pearl David, she bears the name of my daughter, Pearl, or my daughter bears her name. Pearl David, she used to be just a fanatic, DSA platform fanatic. And she's just, she used to just be on fire. And now it's like she's coming back, coming back on air again. What a pleasant surprise. Well, Rochelle White says, I've never heard any topic, at this subject taught. Like, I've never heard this subject taught so powerfully. Well, you know, that's what I'm hearing many people talk about. Shioma say, thank you, Pastor. Nobody has taught this. We truly never knew God. Yeah, you see, that's the problem. That is... Uh, this is one of the reasons I, I, I saw some video clips that broke my heart the other day from my country. I mean, these are men of God that I people, everybody respect. These are the fathers of the land. And if you see what they were doing, if you see the kind of prayers they are praying, uh, some of them are doing prayers that if anybody is uh, holding back your success, Pray that it will, that God will kill them, that they will die, that uh, you know God's power, God's fire should go and burn them down, destroy them. They don't walk in the truth. All these things are the opposite of the truth. And I don't remember if you, I don't know if you people remember what we spoke about last night in, in regards to that. So the truth will stand for itself. The truth will vindicate itself. 
the truth does not need defense of man. Anyway, so let's uh, quickly uh, do a rundown of the levels of truth that we have discussed already. We have already discussed four levels of truth. The first level of truth is the truth you speak to yourself. You speak the truth to yourself about yourself. That's the first level of truth. You speak, let me have somebody come. Uh, yeah, please. We have Frank here. Frank, the first level of truth is the truth you speak to yourself about. Not about your mother, not about your father, about yourself. Or if I have you in my life, like a friend or family member or whoever, the truth is, the first level of truth is the truth that I speak to myself about myself. So let's say I read the Bible. If I'm reading the Bible, I'm getting some truth from that Bible. I must, the, the, whatever the Bible is talking to me about, I must relate it. I must take it as the truth of the word of God, God's truth to me. And I must use that truth. I must take that word and assume that God is speaking to me the truth about myself. When I read the Bible, therefore, I don't focus on God speaking through me to somebody else. If that could happen too. But before that happens, I must allow the truth to speak to me about myself. So that is the first level of truth. The ability for you to always speak to yourself the truth about yourself. Not just when you read the Bible, not just when you are in the church, but just generally. Anytime you think, anytime you think, anytime you want to talk about anything, first of all, speak to yourself. And speak the truth to yourself when nobody is there, nobody is hearing, nobody knows about it, but you admit it. You confess it to yourself about yourself. That's number one truth. Number two truth, level of truth, is the truth you speak to yourself about another or in regards to another. So whatever anything, whenever anything is happening to another person, you don't see that thing that is happening to point an accusing finger at the other person. You don't see the thing that is happening to him. I don't see whatever is happening to you and say, oh, he's like that. No, I use the opportunity of the thing that is happening to you to speak to myself. I see what is happening to you and that is good and I use it to speak the truth to myself about myself through what is happening to you. And maybe something is bad. Maybe you are doing something bad. I use that as an opportunity to talk to myself the truth about myself again. Maybe you even hurt me or you are doing something bad towards me. I still use that situation that has happened to use it as an opportunity to talk to myself some truth about myself through your life or through what you did or through what happened through us. So the first two levels of truth is about me. I am speaking the truth to myself, about myself. First of all, without any other person's interfer interference. No wife, no husband, no children, just me and me and truth alone. I must be naked before the truth. I must be empty before the truth. That is the first level. The second level is whatever is happening to my husband or to my wife or to my children. I am using all that is happening to any other person around me or in my world as an opportunity to learn and to speak the truth to myself. Even if they deserve to be judged, even if they deserve to be condemned, even if they are doing something wrong, I am not thinking about them right now. The first person I focus on about what they, whenever anything is happening to any other person is about me. Is using the opportunity to learn and use whatever is happening to other people to learn some things about myself and to speak the truth to myself. So that is the second level of truth. 
Now, the third level of truth is when after I have passed those two levels of truth, I've spoken to myself about myself the truth, I've spoken the truth to myself about myself all alone, only me and truth, then I've spoken the truth to myself about myself through what is happening to other people around me, even though the other person doesn't know. You don't have to know. Then, number three level of truth is when I am now I have now received the level, the truth that is coming to me directly, the truth that is coming to me through you, through other people, through many people, and then I am right now ready to present my life to the world and to present my life to you as truthful as possible. The real truth that I am inside, the thing that represents the truth about me, I am now living a lifestyle that relates to the truth that is reflecting the truth of who i am and what i am inside so i must that is the third level of truth is the truth the, about me that i speak to you or to the world the truth about me that i speak to the world now but one, one very important thing about the truth is this when the truth is, I'm speaking the truth to myself, about myself, the first level, it is all supposed to end in action. It is all to help me take some corresponding action. The purpose of the truth is to change me. So I'm learning this truth so that I might learn some things and learn how to change and become the better person I could, the best person I could become. So the purpose of me speaking the truth to myself is to change, is to be different, is to become better. And when also I, I speak the truth to myself about myself through what is happening to you and through what is going on in your life, it is also for me not to change you, but to change myself, first of all, to judge myself. To correct myself and to become the best that God wants me to be. Now that I have done that two level of truth, then the third level of truth is now me trying to live my life and my lifestyle in a way that is corresponded to the truth as much as possible. I am trying to live the life of truth as much as it's permissible. As much as it is possible. That is, it doesn't mean that I have to be perfect. But it means that I am at least representing the truth. About who I am. My weakness. My strength. my The truth. I'm living a true life. That is why Jesus was always attacking the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees, they were not perfect. But they were pretending to be perfect. That is what religion does for you. So the third level of truth is the truth that I now speak about myself. Or I present about myself. Or how I represent myself to the world around me. How I, or how I speak about myself to the world. Or how I represent myself to others, to my neighbors, and to the world around me. That is number three level of truth. The number fourth level of truth that we have to all discuss today. And I want to find out what you people got and understood. This number fourth level of truth is totally different. This number fourth level of truth is the truth about another person. My truth that I speak to another person. So this time, I understood some truth. I believe that I know some truth. And I want to now begin I want to now begin to help other people or tell the truth to other people or try to minister to other people or just it is now my relationship with the outward outside world in the sense that I want to contribute to another person's life. So it is the truth about another person that I'm telling that other person or the truth that I want to tell the rest of the world about themselves. But there is something important here about this truth. When I, whenever I take it upon myself to tell the truth to somebody else, I must always be aware of one thing, that that is just my truth. 
That is how I understand it. That is what I am convinced of. Which means I am giving the other person the benefit of a doubt to either receive or reject. To, be, to believe or disbelieve. To uh, accept or doubt me. Or maybe to even counter me. And oppose me. And come with his own opinion. And with his own intention. Or maybe even come with a counter truth. His own truth. That might even be the very opposite of what I believe to be the truth. Why, does, why should that be so? Because God gives everybody free will. God is a God of freedom. To freedom he called us. So that's why any organization that you go to, any church that you belong, where they are controlling you and they want to make you do things and they are forcing things on you and they are making you to do what the pastor wants to do or what the pastor believes, is a cult. It is not right. They can only present the truth to you and you have to choose to believe or not to believe, to accept or not to accept, even in the family with your children, even in the family with your wife, even in the family with your husband. You never say, because I know it is true, I have the truth, I, have to, I can now force the truth on you. You remember yesterday I hit you? I don't use the truth to hit anybody in the head. And I don't use the truth to suppress anybody. The fact that I have the truth does not give me... The truth is not an instrument of suppression. The truth is not an instrument of bondage. The truth... So any church that you go to, when they tell you, you cannot go to any other church, you can say, we are the right church, so you cannot go to any other church. No, even if you are the, right, the rightest church in the world, even if they are the most right church, in, the, in fact, you are the only correct church in the whole world, that, should, that, that shouldn't be an excuse to use the argument that you are the best church in the world to now hold people in bondage. As soon as you begin to say, we are the best church, you cannot go to any other church, you begin to, you are no more the best church. You begin to lose the truth. You, it is no more the truth when your truth has to hold people by force or has to hold people in bondage. It is no more, you don't have the truth anymore. When you say you are the best uh, church, you, are the be you have the best message and you have to force people to be under that message, to listen. Let the message itself communicate to the people that is the best. Let the people themselves compare what they are hearing from you to whatever, you know, they, 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 they are hearing everywhere else. And let them make their own choice to say that that is the best thing, that, that they are the best church. So whenever you say, you are, I'm your husband. So because I'm your husband, you cannot say anything or you cannot go anywhere. You cannot do whatever you want. Then you are not the husband. Because you are an insecure husband. If you really believe that you are the husband, you must give your, husband, your wife the honor and the freedom to be able to recognize by herself that you are a husband and to be able to respect you just because you have proved the fact that you are a good husband. And when she sees the fact that you are a good husband, she herself wants to respect you. That is the truth. But if you are forcing her, who said, the Bible said, uh, you know, I am the head or whatever of my family. Uh, the, fa the husband is the head of the family. You must obey. You must do what I say. It means you don't know the truth. That It means you are not corresponding with that truth. You are not living that life of who you say you are. Because if you are really a true husband, a real genuine husband, you will not need to use force. That is what the truth is about. That's why Jesus didn't convert the whole world. When he was here, he didn't force everybody to get born again, and that is why. When you, I'm so sorry about what I'm about to say now. Some of the most respected men of God in my country. Yesterday, I was watching a, some of some videos from them, and somebody was saying every day he comes every Sunday they come with another thing. Just somebody say the spirit of barrenness. He's going to die today. So why didn't Jesus kill it? He was here now, before you. He couldn't kill the spirit of Baron, and now you want to kill it. And people are saying, hey, man. Then another day he comes. Everything's on YouTube. Another day, this another man of God comes and says, the spirit of loneliness, we want to kill it today. We must butcher it and murder it and kill it. Ah. Oh, my. And these are the people you call the fathers of the land. 
And people are saying, yes, 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 yes. And they begin to pray. <laughs> Everything based on deception, on lies, on lack of truth, on illegitimacy. Some of them will come to church and say, today is your breakthrough. Today, everybody must get their breakthrough. Today is the day. You must not live here without. All of them go. And they come back next Sunday. But he had said today, last Sunday. And nothing happened. So why are you coming back again? And you will say another today again. Are you, are you, I'm sure you've heard it before. <laughs> Some of them will say, today we are going to kill the devil. How? <laughs> Even God they didn't kill him. <laughs> and these are men of God that people are, are respecting. Barrenness, we are going to kill barrenness. She naked. My God. So all kind of embarrassing things that people do, and all the kind of okay, some people will come and say, the person who is behind your problem, let's kill the person, let's kill them right now. All the people that are saying you will not succeed, let's deal with them right now. And they will be quoting some scriptures. You must kill the enemy. It means you don't have the truth. Those things are just waste of time. There is something now in Nigeria they call the service of vengeance. Vengeance. That we are going to do service to take vengeance on everybody that's against you. Ah -ah. So they are going to be praying that God should now go and take vengeance on all your enemies. And they will be quoting some Old Testament passages. People are just lost. People have just lost it. It just makes me so sad. So, but the truth will fight for you, you see, if you have the truth. The truth will stand by itself. The truth will speak for itself. The truth will defend itself. The truth cannot, cannot fail. Just today now, for example, just today, here today, my some of my people, some of my friends came here today to see me. And those people who came here, I was trying to tell them that about this thing I'm telling you right now. That this is horrible what is going on in my country. And they are from Nigeria too. You know what they told me? I thought they were going to support me and said, uh, Pastor, it's, it's true. This thing is so horrible. You know what they said? They said, no, but Pastor, how can the people be, you know, how do they say, oh. How can they defend themselves? The people have to protect themselves somehow now. <laughs> I said, what, what? He said, yes, but because, uh, Pastor, because, you know, but you know, you are also of Africa, you know, people have to defend themselves somehow. I said, I was dazed. So I said, what do you mean? They said, Pastor, you listen. I said, okay, me, I will listen. So they now started preaching to me. So they said, you imagine in Nigeria, you know the way things are in Africa. As if it's not like that all over the world. But me, I kept quiet. So I said, let me, let me get the argument. They said, okay, they have the argument. The husband and wife, two of them or me. I said, okay. <laughs> so look, look, at the, look to the argument. You come here, please. The argument is this. You are a family. You are a family, a successful family in the neighborhood. And you, you are the unsuccessful family in the neighborhood. So, and you see that his children have graduated, his business is doing well, and you got jealous. Okay? And because you got jealous, they said, this is what happens in Africa. They said, okay, so what should we do? What? So if he get, you get jealous, and then you go to the harbor list. Where is the harbor list? You come. You <laughs> <laughs> You are going to be the herbalist. Now, herbalist is Juju man. You are the Juju man. So he. <laughs> so he. See, I don't want to tell me this. Oh. They say, he now, what happens in Africa is, you now will go to the Juju man, to the black magic guy, and say, go and help me do you know, some black magic 
or some you know some evil thing invoke some evil spirit to go and hurt him so that his children if they are women they will not get married or they will not have children or his business will collapse so that things bad things will happen to him so you you know because it is happening in nigeria all the time so everybody has to know how to protect themselves so they are now asking me so <laughs> When you live in such a society, because they are saying it's because I'm living in Europe. So when you live in that kind of society where somebody gets jealous, he gets jealous, and he get, there is a black uh, black uh, magic juju guy that is there. You are the juju guy, <laughs> and 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 so what should he do? How could should he defend himself if I say what these pastors are saying is bad and it's it's not true and this is it's not scriptural? So what do you expect him to do? I said, because if that happened, they said, oh, pastor, ah, you don't know. It happens all the time. I said, what happens? They do things and things happen. He will lose his job, first of all, number one. Number two, he becomes, he loses everything. Number three, you know, he could begin to have problems in his family. His children will begin to fail in school. All evil things will begin to happen. Those things that the black magic guy did, it happens. They are prone to Christians, don't Christians, to everybody all the time. I said, okay. So I said, so who to blame? I'm asking them, who to blame? They said, Pastor, what kind of provocation is that? Who is to blame? I said, well, let me answer. You cannot answer me. I will answer who to blame. Who is to blame is, I said, this guy that invoked, you are the one that invoked the evil spirit. I mean, you went to the, to the black magic guy. So he, you are the one that is envious. I said, that guy that is envious. It's not to blame him. He said, ah, what do you mean? Ah, so the Babalawa is to blame. The, you are the Babala, <laughs> the, the black magic is to blame. I said, no. I said, so you said, no, Pastor, what do you mean? You mean the guy that got jealous and went to the Babalawa is not to blame. And now you are saying the Babalawa, I mean, the black magic himself is not to blame. So he is not to blame. Who is not to blame? So what happened? So what do you mean, Pastor? Ah, so they, now they got, I got their attention very well. <laughs> I got the attention very, very well. Then he said, okay. So, so one, one put the thing like that. Okay. So, then the, one, the wife did, uh -huh. so, so uh -huh. we are listening now to you, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the woman, I said, who is now to blame? I said, the person is to, who is to blame is the, is the good guy, is the successful guy. He is to blame. He is to blame. They say, Pastor. But since I said, but I listen to you. So listen to me to the end now. So <laughs> he is to blame, and I will prove to you now that he is to blame. So what makes him to be the one to be blamed? They said, because he, I said, because he, if that thing you said happened, you said he went to invoke the black magic. I mean, he went to consult the black magic, the, the black magic, and the black magic invoked some spirit, and oh, he lost his business, he lost his family, his children are dying. All those things happen to him, then he's to blame. If it didn't happen to him, then he's not to blame. But if it happened to him, then he's to blame. He said, "How?" I said, "Because did you just tell me that that man is a Christian?" They said, "Yes, he's a Christian." Then he's to blame now. He said, how can he be blamed? Because he's successful. I said, no. He is to blame because it is either foolishness or ignorance that will make him to be a Christian and still allow any evil forces, any invocation, any demonic attack to hurt him. That is rubbish. That is Foolishness, stupidity that will make that to happen to him. They say, Pastor. But that happens now. I say, Yes. The only reason it happens is because this Christian, Ada is not a Christian at all. Because too many of us are religious and we think we are Christians. Too many of us, it is religion no, that we are calling Christians. We don't really know the Lord at all. I said, For him to allow that to happen to him. That he will lose his family, he's losing his job, and he's losing his business and everything. It is an embarrassment and a disgrace to my God. We, we are not believing the same Jesus. We are not believing the same Lord. 
Because the truth has said, the word of God has says, said that if he is truly a Christian, he is hidden in Christ. The Bible said that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He died for me. For my justification. And when after dying for his justification, Jesus Christ went to hell, fought with all principalities and powers, defeated them for him. And then besides defeating all principalities and powers for his sake, Jesus now went and when he was going to heaven, Jesus took him with him and put him inside him to hide himself. Jesus hid him inside of himself and went to sit at the right hand of the Father, making him to sit inside him at the right hand of the Father. The only thing that could make any evil, any force of evil to touch him and to hurt him is if he doesn't know. He is not aware of who he is. They say, Pastor, we know that now. I say, you know it in your head, but you don't have faith in it. You have more faith in the fact that and an evil spirit can hurt you. You have more faith in the fact that Babalao can hurt you. You have more faith in the fact that see, any demon, a wish, or wizard can hurt you. It is even criminal for you to even think about it. For you to even part, no, permit that in your mind. For you to even allow it in your mind. For you to even think about it. For you, I said, they say, you are telling me, you people are telling me that Christians must defend themselves. So you are praying. For him to have even started praying about this thing is a problem. Come close. For him to have prayed about it is a problem. Why is it a problem for him to pray about it? If he begins to pray against the witchcraft people, the Babalao guy, if you pray against the Babalao guy, you are in trouble. No? Because that fact that you are praying that this, what he is doing should not hurt you or what he is doing should not hurt you means you believe that it can hurt you. It means you do not believe what Jesus said. And what Jesus said that you are hidden. If you be really truly believe that you are hidden in Christ Jesus. If you truly believe that you, he, he has put all principalities and powers under your feet. And he has made you to sit down on top of them. In high places. In the heavenly places. He has subjected them. He has subjected principalities. He has subjected powers. He has subjected all forces of darkness in every if in, in, in the heavens under your feet. He has made you to triumph over them. If you really believe it, you will not even pay attention at all to any threat of wishes, to any threat of wizards, to any threat of demonic forces. You will not even be aware that they exist. The only time that you will be aware that they exist is to cast them out. If they come across you anyhow. So the fact that you will even be praying that, oh God, protect me, protect me, worship me. You are insulting my God. You are insulting my God. Because God has already not just protected you. He has defeated them for you. And he has hidden you in himself. And he has even made you to sit upon them. And now you are going back to that same God. And say you protect, you are slapping God in the face. You are spitting to my, to, to, to my, to, to, you know, to the face of my God. You are an embarrassment and a shame to God. You. So all those prayers people are praying in our churches is an embarrassment to God. They say, but, but pastor, I said, okay, before you say, but, but let me finish my story. I said, I am from Ijebu, Ijebu land. I said, do you know that in Nigeria? If you want to look for the headquarters of witchcraft and juju, and is it juju you call it? Voodoo. Voodoo. Juju, voodoo. If you want to look for the headquarters, it's in my place. <laughs> I said the second place that could be the headquarters of voodoo and juju is Benin, Benin City. I said the only thing that makes those things to work is because you are aware. Or you, you make yourself aware of what they can do. Why should you be more aware of what they can do than what God has done? So because you are aware of what they can do, and I don't say they cannot do it, they are doing it every day to the, to the ignorant minds. 
because you are more because of that the fear the awareness as you have elevated that your awareness over the awareness of what Jesus has done so even though you know in your head what Jesus has done but you don't believe it so I said for example do you know that the be Oba, the or the Oba of Bini, Oba of Bini, yeah? yeah, the king of Benin, before the white people, the Europeans, English people came to his palace, they used to say, No human being can see him and die and live and, and, and remain alive. He has to cover his face, and you cannot live see him and, and, and remain alive. And you cannot go to his temple without some permission. There have to be some, you cannot enter into his chamber and the secret. They have all kind of demonic something. You have to do sacrifice upon sacrifice because anybody could go inside to the chamber or where the witchcraft the gods are. When the white people gave him instruction and he disobeyed, <laughs> I said, These people, they didn't even believe in Jesus. These are just soldiers from, you know, from Great Britain. They didn't even believe in God at all. They, they are just normal soldiers. They just send them. The person who is sending them is sitting in England. <laughs> they say, and the people in Benin City did all kind of sacrifice. They put all kind of juju. They call all their gods. All the spirits they could invoke, they invoke them. So to defend their city and their palace and their king. And the palace, the, the king didn't run anywhere because he believed that, ah, no human being can do the same thing. The fathers, the god of our ancestors, they are here. They are here to protect. They will do something. When the young, about 50 soldiers, you know, you know, when, they, <laughs> when the soldiers came, they just looked for the palace. They shot some things at the and they fell. I just went into the, no, no sacrifice to break any cause. They just entered into that palace. They saw the king and they moved the king, the thing they put on his head, the, the crown, and they threw it. <laughs> they removed the thing from the head and just threw it. <laughs> that made nobody die. Oh. And then, <laughs> after that, they went and do not just took the thing, they moved they took the king, the guy who was sitting on the throne. And that throne is a, sac a sacred throne that it is some father's throne and ages and something sacrificing. They just put the guy out of there and arrested him and put and cuff the guy. Yo. <laughs> they put and cuff in his head and just threw him away there and put him in prison. <laughs> no demon came. No principality came. No power came. But if it had been a black man that did that or a, a, a local person, he would have died. If, because they believe, they even... But the white man doesn't even care about that. He doesn't even know of whatever you are thinking in your head or whatever sacrifice. He doesn't even know what sacrifice is. <laughs> so you know what they did? <laughs> you know what they did that spoil everything? They went to the gods, into all the chambers of the gods, or the shrines. And they said, ah, they were seeing the gods. Because the gods, they have images of the idols in the shrines. And you have to do sacrifice all on them, pour oil. The, the all the soldiers just started. They went to the all the shrine and started picking all the gods, <laughs> <laughs> all the idols. They just started picking, and they were calling them souvenirs. Ah, this, <laughs> they didn't even know they were they were gods. <laughs> they were saying, oh, what artifact? What artifact? They were what a souvenir. <laughs> Up to today, we are still trying to return some of those souvenirs. All the demons disappeared. <laughs> Nobody died though. Up to today, we are still negotiating to tomorrow for some of those gods to come back. <laughs> the god couldn't defend himself. <laughs> Talk less of you who know the truth. <laughs> Talk less of you who Jesus died for. No soldiers, nobody died for them. No Jesus, no high places, no heavenly places, nothing. It just. <laughs> <laughs> just they refuse to believe rubbish <laughs> and i said in my own Ijebu land too they had you know the british empire had taken over the whole of nigeria but the black the, the last remnant of nigeria to, to be taken was my own place Ijebu land and they said no nobody has ever conquered us nobody will conquer uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> with juju black magic so they gave them money they gave the money to our king I say, hey, you hey, come up for road, you know. <laughs> you better surrender. If you don't surrender, you are finished. He said, ah, we, we are all more, we are the son of this, 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 and this. Our father, God, and this, and this, 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 this. Ah, we are this, this, and this. Nobody says something like this. Nobody says that. Okay. They gave him two months. So that two months, <laughs> that two months, 
My people went and did fortification. We call it fortification. Is it fortification? For, uh, fortification. They went and fortified the land. They went and there is a river between Lagos and Ijebu. They went and buried 40 virgins alive. 40 virgin girls and 40 virgin boys alive. That is the height of the sacrifice. After that, you don't cross that river. <laughs> when the day came, <laughs> you know the, Brit the British people, they had some local police and the soldiers. The who are Nigerians, <laughs> huh? You know, no, the soldiers, just the foot soldiers. They don't just have the, they have the officers who are the British people, but they have the soldiers who are the. So the Yoruba soldiers, they knew who the Jebu was. So they were saying, going now. He said, no, no, we are not going to go. We can smell witchcraft. The Yoruba soldiers were saying that because they are aware, you, because of what they knew, their mindset, it was holding them back because they believe in those things, and it was hurting them. So you know what the British people did? They just say five, five, five white uh, British people, the officers, go in front. And all the Awusa guys, all the Awusa who don't understand Yoruba or anything, you follow them. 2,000 Yoruba, I mean, Awusa soldiers follow. They cross the river, and they don't nothing happen. <laughs> and when they cross the river, they, they fire two machine guns, the kings on the end, and they say, oh! No, no, we can run so that we saw that anything. Anything you want, take it. <laughs> no witchcraft did anything to anybody. <laughs> Nobody died. They went to his palace and ransacked everything and threw him and sent him away from the city itself. <laughs> and put their own guy that will do whatever he wanted. No witchcraft did anything. And the Babala, the real man, the the he was lying down, prostrated, and said, "Please don't take, don't kill me. Just leave me. I, I'm ready to be a slave. I'm ready to be anything." I said, "Don't you know that from all of Africa, slaves were being sold in millions to the diaspora? You know who those slaves were? They were all were witchcraft people like you." They were all thinking they were having power until they they you were white some white person all their white something just disappeared <laughs> and the, all the babalawas and the witchcraft people they became slaves in the Caribbean nothing happened <laughs> nothing happened but we Christians today despite what these are just unbelieving people who didn't just believe in the rubbish. Because we Christians don't even know that by mentioning, I'm talking about this, somebody is against you, somebody is doing you, somebody is uh, behind this, somebody is you know, hunting. By repeating it and hearing all these things all our life, we are now believing in more than we are believing in the finished work of Christ. We don't walk in the truth. We don't know the truth. We are not practicing the truth. The truth doesn't mean anything to us. We just see, he, he had the name, wonderful, the name of Jesus and the word of Jesus. We speak them and then we finish. Oh, God is this and this. But it, it doesn't mean anything. To us. What we really believe in our heart of heart is the power of those people. Is the, that evil can hurt us. We really believe in our down, down, down heart of heart. It is ev this evil spirit that we still worship and we believe. It seems we fear them. If you fear them, it means you believe in them. Yet today, Pentecostals are still praying for deliverance. Pentecostals today are still praying that you should for protection. People who say they are Pentecostal, they are tongue speaking, that they are born again, that they are going to heaven, they are still praying today that demons, some problems are after you, some demons are after you. Some rubbish, just nonsense, just irritation, embarrassment. Whereas in Europe, any European person or American who doesn't even believe in anything, no devil, no God, nothing. He's more successful than you, Pentecostal guy, who is casting out demons all the time, who is believing God, who is doing miracles. They are praying, bringing good for breakthrough. All those, your breakthrough didn't do anything for you. Instead of you to forget about Satan and forget and throw away all those rubbish and do what you need to do. So, this fourth level of truth is if the word of God says so, the truth is the truth. If the word of God says, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Go and sleep. 
If you really believe in that, stop going to those prayer meetings. Why are you going to... Look, look tell me the logic. How can they say, greater is he that is in you, and you believe in him, than he that is in the world, than Satan, than principalities, than powers? He's, you believe him. And then you are going to with them to prayer meetings. For what? Ah, so that the, 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 the devil will not touch you. Ah, but you just said greater is... <laughs> I thought you just said you said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So why are you going? Why, you, why? Ah, we are going for fortification for God to protect from what? From the, the the one you are already greater than. If the Bible say that no, no, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, believe in it. We don't believe in the truth. We don't believe the word of God is the truth. We don't know the concept of the truth. That's why Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they will judge you. They will, they, will, they will vindicate me. I will not defend myself. Why will I not defend myself? Because the word that I've spoken to you, they are the truth. The word of truth that I've spoken to you, the, in the last, the, the, that truth will speak for me. That truth will defend me. The truth is powerful enough to defend. He said, I will not judge anybody. I do not judge anyone. Why? Because the word that I've spoken, the truth that I've spoken will do the job. That's why when the children, then the apostles, the disciples of Jesus, when they were, you know, coming to arrest him, somebody cut off one of the, the ears and he said, why are you doing that rubbish? Bring the ear for me, John. Let me put it back. So he put, <laughs> he put the ear back. I said, why are you wasting your time? If I am the truth, if I am the truth, even though I have the power, to bring down my own army from heaven, not the, this one's most small army, or Roman Empire army, this rubbish. I will bring the one from heaven to fight for me. I could do that. But even that, I will not do it. You know why I will not do it? If I am the truth, the truth that I've spoken to you will vindicate me. And I will arise in the third day. When he was going to Jerusalem, and those villagers stopped them. And they said, I know, well, let's bring fire down. That is what people are doing in my country today. They will be quoting Elijah, who brought fire down on, the mount, on some people. They will be quoting you know, El Elisha, who killed all the children with lion. And they say, okay, we are powerful. You are not powerful. Jesus said, you don't even know what, what spirit you are. Because they came to Jesus also. They said, but Jesus, we know you are powerful now. Let's use your power, Jaren. Let's use your power. And bring fire down from heaven like Elijah did. And consume this whole village. If we just let them know we have power. Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you are for. If you know, you will know that the truth have already spoken. Forget. Let them do anything they will do. The truth will vindicate me. The truth will speak for me. The truth, it's, the truth itself will still save them. If you have not yet shared this message... Allow me to appeal to you, everybody. Please go look for... In fact, I'm going to do a series of... With the way I'm seeing this thing going, I'm going to do another series on principalities and powers. I'm going to do another series on satanic forces and forces of darkness. I'm going to do another series, a whole series, on evil forces and how to overcome them. Because I see that Christians of today have totally lost it. So let's go and do... Let's go and share this message. Look under your video. you see a share button there. Let's go share it. So this fourth level we are talking about is the, true, is the level of truth whereby you speak the truth to another person or I speak the truth to all of you and I say that is what I believe. Oh. That is my own truth. Oh. If it is the truth, it will vindicate me. If it is the truth, it will speak for me. If it is the truth, it will prove to you. It will explain itself to you. It will that's why God is not making everybody to be born again by force. Mm -hmm. If it is the truth, the gospel that he has given to us, that gospel which will be able to convince your heart without making you to do it by force. So, it, so we don't, you don't use truth to captivate people. You don't use truth to break people's head. You don't use, you use truth to, to frighten people, to scare people, and to you know, make people afraid. If you really have the truth, You will let the truth. You will tell your truth. You are sure of your own truth. 
but you will give the other person the benefit of a doubt. You will give them the, 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 the right to even object to your truth. You will give them the opportunity to even say they disapprove of what you are saying. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, if I, even, even if I go to the extent of bearing witness of myself, my witness will still be true because I am he. I am from God. I could, you know, I'm, the, I'm God myself. My witness will be truth. But I will not do that. For I know where I come from and where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from, where I'm going. So I will not do that. I will not prove myself. I will not judge for myself. They say, oh, do miracle to confirm that you are. No, no, I will not do that. Why? The judge. You judge according to the flesh. But I don't judge anyone. I don't judge anyone. The word that I speak, the truth that I speak will judge. It will speak for me. That is John 8, 14 to 15. I spoke about it yesterday. Then John 12, 48 says, He who rejects me. So Jesus gave people even the liberty to reject him. To reject his truth. But he is so confident that that too will vindicate him sooner or later. And he, I mean, he's not afraid that anybody is afraid. I mean, he's against him. Or he doesn't agree with him. Or disregard him. So I even I give them the liberty to reject. If you really have the truth, you will be confident. Even when people are rejecting you or abusing you or even killing you, you are not frightened by that. You are not intimidated by that. He said, he who rejects me, then he will reject me. But I'm so sure of my truth. I am not going to allow your rejection to intimidate me. Your rejection will not intimidate me. Your, your attack will not intimidate me. Your lack of uh, acceptance will not intimidate me. So even, he said, he who rejects me, does not receive and does not receive my words has he who judges him the word the truth that I have spoken will judge him in the last day so so this is when you a carrier you are the carrier of the truth and you want to use your truth to change the world your own job is to present your truth to speak your truth to persuade people with your truth to make your point your own point is, is not to use the truth to frighten people or captivate people. No, present the truth and let the truth do the job. If you are really confident of your truth, you will not use that truth to dominate people, to oppress people, and to have kind of, you know, overbearing attitude over people. Otherwise, it will be magic you are doing, not truth. Okay, so thank you guys. I'm going to let you go now. Now I'm going to call forward those people who were here yesterday. Or maybe you were not here yesterday, but you listened to this message. And you would like to tell me what you got from this point number four. I want you people to come and explain to me as many as you can. If you, if you are here now and you can explain, and you want to explain number point level number two, I mean level number four of the truth, nobody is coming. Please come out and let me know what you got from me. And I want to hear from all of you as many as possible to come here and let me know what you got from level number four of truth and how that is going to apply in your life, how you understand it, so that I'll be able to add to you and contribute and we could all discuss. I want a whole panel here. So come and let me know anybody that is sure that he was here and he heard what we spoke about. Please. Do you remember what we spoke about yesterday? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you got and how you understood it. Okay. So the first thing I understood was that um, the level of truth is that it is when you tell another your truth. This is number what? Number four. Because you didn't say that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So the, the, we were talking about the fourth level of truth. And this is about, this is when you tell your truth to another about another or so, about the world about others okay mm -hmm. about others or the world and what i first got about this was that oftentimes we forget the our truth the our part in this statement because i can imagine there's a louder place okay i can imagine this being um the favorite uh, level of truth for most christians because Usually we see ourselves as the people who are to bring the truth. 
So what we do is we go and talk to other people about the things that we see, but we don't, uh, we don't tell them that this is our truth. We make the truth absolute. So we don't give them the choice to accept or reject the truth that we've seen or that we come with. So I have seen this very often in my own family or at church where people who, or even at work, where people who feel like they're for some reason superior to you, that they come with their truth and try to impose it on you and try to make you accept it because they feel like they know or they have the experience or they are older or anything like that. So for me, this is really, really, I want everyone, you know, who is especially in a superior position, be it your parents or if you're a parent or if you're a boss or if you're anyone who is overseeing another person to really listen to this because it helps us to, you know, not be prideful. It helps us to look at ourselves and to approach people in a humble way. Because at the end of the day, we all come with our own perception. Nobody knows everything. And there's something that we don't know, no matter how much we know. So I think this really, to me personally, has reminded me of this fact. And it has put me in a very peaceful position because even if I know what I know, I know that I don't have to defend the truth because the truth will defend itself. So all I have to do is to just go and deliver the truth as I have understood it. And also that's the important thing. It is as I have understood it because even I could have misunderstood something because I'm not perfect. So I have to always keep that in mind and know and remind myself that whatever I know, I'm not perfect. I do not know the absolute truth. My mind is still limited to the truth. So I have to let the truth do what it has to do and be the messenger of it um, in my own perception. So that's one of the things that I got. Uh, While you are looking for your next yes. point, please make your first point. Okay, this one, which is the truth that I tell another, that I know about the world that I tell another person. I thought this is a very good one. To, Louder because I thought this was a very good one to understand how to foster a, a healthy relationship, and um, it's not something that I practice very well, but it's something that I think that it would really help me to foster a good relationship. Knowing that this is a truth and sharing with another person, and also giving the person an opportunity to have an opinion and share what they think their their truth is about the world as well, because uh, with everything, there's always, for me, um, there's uh, the opposite side. There's all, always the opposite coin um, or side of, of, anything, yeah. of everything. So for that reason, um, just allowing other people to hear my truth and share their truth or even listen just to the truth alone without the pressure for me now, without the pressure of having to Say this is my truth and you have to believe it. It's quite really liberating and also it would help me to foster a better relationship with other people because I've always thought that if if it's true and it's an absolute truth, then if I share it with you or I share it with another, then that other just needs to accept that truth and know it's the truth and almost ends a dialogue. It ends an intelligent conversation. And I also see it as an opportunity for me to grow because possibly when I share my truth with somebody else, they might have something else that they want to say about that truth or they might have another truth or something that is contrary to that. So it's just an opportunity. For me. I, I'm finding it really liberating. It's just an opportunity for me to develop a better relationship and understand other people better instead of looking at everything that because it's the truth, I stand on that. And for that reason, if somebody else doesn't accept my truth or what I'm sharing with them, they're wrong. You know, it's, uh, and that's absolutely, that, that doesn't help anything. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help my relationships with other people. It doesn't help the other people. So, um, I'm, this fourth one is a really big one for me and something that I think that I need to really. Remember. Because of the benefit of the doubt? Yes. Um, well, we say the benefit of the doubt all the time, but we don't practice it, especially when we think something is a truth. Truth for us, because we say truth is absolute. So when we believe that is a truth as well, we also believe that everybody else should accept it because it's absolute. But we're not giving anybody the benefit of the doubt. We just want them to accept it because what else could be wrong? What else 
how come they cannot what say about it? they are not saying it yet yes they might not say it yet but we don't want to know if they don't say it yet they should just accept it because we think that it's true so how did, what is the truth now what did you get now so what i'm getting here from now is that you know just free people free other people to accept your truth or not accept your truth have another another opinion from what you have and also you free yourself to chill out and not believe that because it's your truth trust the truth to fight for itself yes trust the truth to convince to do his own work if you really believe in your truth the way you say you believe in it if you really believe in it the way you say you believe in it if you really believe in that truth the way you say you believe in it you will go to sleep that's the same thing i'm saying about churches and about believers it's just like my sister was telling me not to go to the village i've told this story before and I told these people today also, I said, I told my sister, I will not just go to the village. I said, right now, I'm calling to the village that I'm coming. She said, ah, okay, even if you want to go, don't call, please don't call. She stood on her knees and begged me not to call. Even if you want to go, just show up and disappear. She said, I said, no, I'm calling right now in your presence that I'm coming to the village. She said, but you know, we lost three cousins, I mean, our uncles, I mean, brothers. We lost our first brother, we lost our, sis we lost our sister, witchcraft has destroyed everything in our family, and now you are the only one that God is raising now, and now you want to go? I said, yeah, you wait. You, you, and this, my sister, is a leader in deeper life, was a leader in deeper life, was a leader in redeemed, was a leader everywhere. She, she was a pastor, even in one of the churches. And now she, they are telling, she is telling me that I shouldn't go to the village. I said, what kind of Christianity do you people believe? So I said, I'm going to that village and I'm calling out. So in her presence, I called to the village. I said, I'm coming home and this is the time, exact time I'm coming. I'm leaving Lagos this time and I'm arriving this time. Then I said, I'm not just coming. Please invite everybody, all the wishes and everybody. Let them come. That I have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> then I told my sister, for you to now know what kind of God we believe in, I said, I will not, from today, because we are staying in the hotel, this hotel, you are living with me in this same room. Say, I would, from today, I refuse to do my quiet time. Which is like an abomination to me now. Oh, God, I, know. I said, I will not do my quiet time again. This is Thursday, and it's Saturday I'm going there. So, bro, between today and Saturday, I will not even pray at all. I will not even pray for food. And when I wake up in the morning like this, I will not even pray. I will just put chewing gum and just <laughs> and then go and eat. I will just be eating and just doing anything I do on regularly. I will not even open my Bible so that you will not say I have fortified myself. No fortification at all. Not fortify anything. I'm not even going to open my Bible between today, right now, from now on to that Saturday. I will not open my Bible and I will not pray at all for anything. Just for you to know that Satan is not something for you to even be troubled about. Satan is not something that you should even lose a sleep. So you should spend sleepless night and on. Satan is not even anything or demons or forces of demons. They have been, you are so, I am so far away from there. I am so established in the truth. What truth? I know I'm hidden in Christ. And for you to get to me, you have to penetrate to Christ. And I just don't know that I'm hidden in Christ. I know I am seated in the heavenly places. I'm, I don't even belong to the heavenly places. They are on the earth somewhere there. I am on the, in the heavenly places. So I will not even pray at all. I will not open Bible at all. I will not even say, no, no, our father who is <laughs> who are in heaven. Between now and that day, I will not even, you know, no, no wahala, no trouble. <laughs> I will not even do any spiritual exercise. I will not even go to church. So that you know say somebody has blessed me. No oil, nothing. <laughs> no man to no handkerchief, nothing. I will not do anything, no. I will just be eating and eating and dining. So that I will be fleshly, fleshly, fleshly. So that I will be kana, kana, kana. Before I go to that village to meet the principalities and powers. Yes. And the demons and the fishes and wizards. Yeah, I want to go there already. <laughs> and the way I will go to ready is to do nothing, is just to go. In the thing I already knew. Because it is not by prayer you overcome Satan. And it's not by prayer that you over overcome principality and power. It is by knowing. And it is not by for the, you know, praying and fasting and getting ready. Oh God, I'm going to the village. Oh, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. 
It is not the blood of Jesus I'm calling right now that will work. It is the blood of Jesus that has been, that has been shed 2,000 years ago that is, that is going to work. And since I'm aware of that blood of Jesus, since I'm aware of where I am seated in Christ Jesus, since I'm aware of how God has defeated, not the small, small vicious and wizard in the village, of, those ones are too small. I'm not even dealing with those ones. I'm talking about the principalities and power, the evil forces in the it was in the darkness in the dark places. So those ones that the ones that are the original, they are the ones I'm talking about. So I didn't drink. I didn't. I mean, I was drinking. In fact, I put on weight that, that week. In three days, I put on weight you know, for another five kilogram because I was not even. I was just eating anyhow, and I was waking up and just doing this demonstratively. So that you will not say it's the prayer I pray that saved me. It is what I am aware of. What I am sure of. It is a positional thing. It is knowing of my position and my authority and my positioning in Christ Jesus, who I am. I'm believing in the truth. The word of truth will speak for me. Greater is he that is in you. That is he that, that, he that is in the world. Finish. I go to sleep. Anyone that is born of God overcomes the world. Am I born of God? Ah, then why am I born? Ah, then I go to sleep, John. Only if I'm not born of God. Though. But once I'm born, and I know it. Ah. But you people are having too much faith in Satan, in what he does. And that's why he's beating you all up, up and down. You need to go and be praying. You better spend more of your time I mean, thinking, meditating on what Jesus has already done. So what you said now is that, <laughs> yeah, somebody is saying a ministry in Ukraine is different from Africa. Mm -hmm. But this story I'm talking, not before Ukraine, no. <laughs> this story I'm talking, Nelson, Matthew, Omole, this story I'm talking is in the heart of Ijebu land. You go and do some ministry in Ijebu land. Go up to my village to go and also say, go, go and pray your prayer. They will beat you with your prayer. <laughs> But I went there without prayers and I was able to bring all of them to their knees and all of them give their lives. You see, so it is not about ministry in Europe and you come and you do Europe now and do ministry too. Come, I will give you place to live and visa. Come and do visa. Let's see what will come out of you. Let even your GO come and do visa, ministry and see what will come out of it. So we're not talking about, you know, we're talking about Christ. We're not talking about geography. <laughs> Thank you. Who is the other person there? What did you get from yesterday's message? You know, the truth. Tell us first of all the fourth level of truth. The fourth level of truth. Make you talk louder. <laughs> you, be, you know it? <laughs> Speak louder. Where the, are you there? The fourth mm -hmm. level of truth is the truth that I I speak to others as a suggestion. So what I learned from, from that level of truth is that as she put it as a suggestion. Every, as she put it as a suggestion to yes. everybody. Yes. Uh, because Even if the person is your son. Is your son. Or uh, your wife. Your wife. Yes. You put it as a suggestion. Not imposing the truth on them because God created every one of us differently. As every an one individual. Of us. Yes. yes. We have different perception. We, we have will and choice to make. Yes. So if you impose your own truth on them, so what you are doing, you you are it's a witchcraft because that yes. is what God manipulating the will yes, of another you, person you is are witchcraft. Mani manipulating the will of another person is a witchcraft. Yes. So God allowed God gives man a free will to make a choice, and when this level of truth i see that in africa we are doing a lot of witchcraft by suppressing by imposing our truth on on people husband imposing their truth on on their wives and father's parents imposing their their truth on on the children also so what i learned about about this level of truth is that this level of truth there is love in this level of truth because you cannot have yes. love that you would you know that this thing is you have the truth you will put it as a way of love 
Even Christ came, he came to his own, and his own received him not. He turned to others to give them the truth. And another thing, uh, another point is that this level of truth, there is, there is humility. You cannot have, you cannot, you don't, if you don't have humility, you cannot present this level of truth. Because you have to have a humble heart for you to, you know that this, as a father, you know that this is good for your son or your child. You say, I just presented this, but I think it would be better. That is, is a level of humility in that, in that level of truth. You know, let, let me go back to the story I was telling about the people who came to visit me. Uh, say, so I was saying, this man who is preaching to you, the Geo, is a big man of God in Nigeria, who was preaching to them that today is your, you know, today, uh, you know, all your demons will die, all your, you know, all your failures will stop, all your problems, you know, you know, all the demons that are attacking you, you know, I set you free, I break it, I do the other. Okay. So I told the guy, I said, this person is telling you that you have the demon of this, you have the, this one, you know, anybody that is holding you back, that is saying you should not be successful, anybody that is telling you you should not, uh, you know, you should you will not make it, anybody that is saying you should not do this and you should not do that, that the person will not be this, will not be this. So I said, you see, that man, by just saying that, that there are some people responsible for your failure is indirectly telling you what you are hearing is that it is possible that people could be responsible for your failure. So what he's telling you really is I'm telling these people who are like hundreds of thousands of people. And he was telling them that, you know, you know, people who are holding you back this year, this month, somebody is holding you back, anybody who is responsible for this. So you are letting them believe more in the power of and forces of evil, in the fact that, you know, people who are holding them back, that is possible. That is even a possibility. By letting them, by preaching that to them, that is, that is even a possibility, that way you are opening their heart to the attacks of the enemy. Because once they believe it's a possibility, they will begin to run away. They will begin to hide. That's why they are all hiding to churches. So all these people are coming to churches in their millions to get protection from people who can hurt them. And who is the one they are getting protection from? You, the one man, man of God, the geo, he is saying, uh, the uh, bishop, he is saying, uh, you know, I am going to protect you from that. I am going to pray. And when I pray for you, you will get delivered. I will pray and you will be free. So I can be free. So he is living in Nigeria also where the same demons are. He is living in that same country where all the people who are holding them back are also living in that same country. How did he get set free from them? How come he could overcome them? How come he is not afraid of them? How come he is the one, only one that is free and all the million people he needs to set them free? So why don't you just teach those millions of people what you know, what made you not to be afraid of them? What made you to be free from those people's manipulation? What gave you that confidence? Where are you not afraid of them? And make them to be like you now. Then nobody will need to come to you. <laughs> nobody will need to come to you for protection. But that is the business in Nigeria. That is the business in my country. Christianity has become a business of fear. And we are using fear to captivate people so that we will tell them that you now, you are all under this problem. I'm the one, I'm the one who is anointed. I am the only one who is anointed. I'm the most anointed. You can go anywhere, you have problem. People will come after you. Demons will stop you. Demons will arrest you. But when you get to me, I am the one to set you free. So we but this is good for you, for your church, for your church will grow, millions will come, but you are discrediting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are discrediting my Lord. You are discrediting the work of redemption. You are discrediting and you are you are you are you are just disgracing the cross. You are disgracing the work of Calvary. You are disgracing what Jesus has done. And this is what is happening in my country. People are building their ministries on fear. People are building their multi mega churches, their multi million congregations on false doctrine. 
that people, you know, people, people, people need deliverance and people need protection and they are the ones who are free. Whatever made you free, why can't you make them also free? Whereby Jesus has said, we, we have the same Christ. The same anointing that is on me is on you, is on everybody else. The same anointing that is on Geo is on me, is on your bishop, is on me, is on, on, on you, on everyone else. So we have the same Christ in, in us. Jesus or Christ is the same promises that you know that you are supposed to teach your people so that they will never need to even need to come to you for such prayers anymore. Sorry, guys. Who is the next one? All right. Um, thank you so much, no, Pastor. It, we, yeah. So I'm sharing on the fourth level of truth, which is the truth that we communicate to other people. Um, we, the truth that we know that we communicate to other people and what I understood from that teaching is the fact that an, any attempt to enforce the truth is actually what gives birth to terrorism so the moment that we are trying to enforce truth just because we think that this is what we believe and then we are trying to enforce it, we are doing everything to uh, make people come under that, we are forcing it then we become like the terrorists. Terrorists are people who think that they have discovered something and then everybody must just get it that day because of what they have discovered. So rather than for them to present it as suggestion, as an idea, for them to uh, lay it out for people, maybe as theory or whatever thing, they want to get everybody to come under the weight of that. So they want to enforce it. And that is actually what gives birth to terrorism. And one of the things I also discovered about this fourth level is that for you to attain the fourth level, then you must have been through the first, yes. the second, <laughs> and the third level of yes. truth. So before you can come to the fourth level, now by the time you are coming to this fourth level, I discovered that you would have uh, built empathy within yourself. So you'll be able to understand people. Very good. You can relate with people. You can relate with the ignorance of people. And then you'll be able to know how to communicate and how to help them. So usually now, at, at this fourth level, when we see ignorance or when we see people do what they do, your, your heart is beating. You, you, you have that empathy, you have that love. So by the time you'll be communicating, you are communicating from the place of love and not from the um, place of authority just because you want to demonstrate authority to people. So empathy is um, extremely important. I think uh, if I have to use an illustration, uh, one that readily comes to my mind is... Uh, a theory by Socrates, the allegory of the cave, when he said that usually everybody were like in a dark cave, but some of us have gone outside of that cave and they've seen the light. Now, by the time you come back to the cave and you want to tell people that, look, you are in the dark, you don't know anything, people are going to kill you. They are going to smash you. So basically he said that from the allegory of the cave is that first of all, because you have been in the cave yourself, so now you have to identify with the people of the cave. You have to make them understand why what um, they believe <laughs> is actually darkness right. and why they are staying in the dark. So that empathy for me came across very strongly yesterday because I came to understand that, look, you don't have to do anything to defend the truth. The truth, uh, I think it's St. Augustine of people who said that truth is like a lion. Just let it out, it will defend itself. Truth is like a lion. Let it out. It will defend it. You don't need to do anything to defend the truth. You can't do anything against the truth before the truth. The truth will defend itself. It will stand. You know, they, they, there's this saying that they say that um, a lie may run for 20 years, but one day truth will catch up. For a thousand up. years. For a thousand years. But truth will catch up. And the question in my mind is why will truth just fold its arms and watch for a thousand years for light to, to keep running? Because it knows that in a swift, it's going to overtake it. So um, truth is not competing with lie. It's just watching it. Do all that you can. Make all of your attempts. Because I know that in, in a single effort, everything that you've done will be cancelled. That is the power of the truth. So I came to understand that we are not struggling with when lie and falsehood is, um, seems to be gaining the day. We are not in competition. Truth and lie, they are not competing together. No. Truth is so confident. Truth is so... Um, self-assured it's assured it's so self-assured truth is so powerful that it knows that in just one single effort everything that has been done will be undone it just took um maybe martin luther a few articles 95 and some of these things and every falsehood that means for generations all of those things were wiped out in the whole of europe 
So I believe strongly that uh, once we believe the power of the truth, once we know what the truth can do, we only need to sit back, be rest assured, and let truth have its own free day. Let it do what it only can do. But what about pride? Because the reason why truth sometimes doesn't work for us, even though we are speaking the truth, is that we are too prideful that we know the truth. And because we are proud and too prideful of our own truth, we don't remember that truth itself is love. And that that same truth is humble. Truth itself is humility. And But when we carry it upon our head and use it to say, ah, but I know it, I'm saved, I'm the one that is born again. And those ones we are, we are passing on the way to church, who are, hey, is, there, is there a problem? If they won't let them believe Jesus Christ. And uh, yeah, we, we, uh, but I'm saved. We are going to church. Why are you not helping them? They are, uh, but they are Muslims now. They are unbelievers. And if they go to the church, if they won't let them come to church, it is being prideful. It is being proud. I mean, and that kind of truth will not help. That kind of truth will not speak to people. That kind of truth will not be effective. And that's why sometimes it's like the truth waits for too long. Because we want the truth to perform at our own time. And that is why, because we want it to vindicate us. But the truth will not be working to vindicate you or me. The truth will vindicate itself. So now, this level of truth, which is, I tell other people about the truth that I know. My truth to other people. And um, what about uh, people, if people are doing what is wrong? Shouldn't I help them, like people say, that shouldn't I enforce the truth upon them and use the truth to make, build them into submission? You want me to comment on that? Any one of you can okay. comment on that. I think for um, when we want to build, beat people into submission, sometimes we achieve that, but we would have uh, raised hypocrites. Because when you are there, if you are beating people into submission with whatever method, when you are there, people will seem to play Agreed. along with your rule. But immediately you are gone, then they go back to whatever because they didn't understand. You didn't help them to see. There was no love. There was no... But once we are able to help people to understand, when people know that everything that has been done is been done in love, there is empathy, and people have grasped the essence of that truth, then either the leader is there or not, then people will continue with, they will continue to run with that. So okay, let's look at the way, the Christianity that we have all, this is the question to all of you. Let's all look at the Christianity that you have been exposed to, that you were aware of. This Christianity, where is the role of the truth? Has the truth been spoken to you with the power of the truth? Has the power of the truth been revealed to you or what, what do you know? about the power and force of the truth before now? Or is it a foreign concept? Or this week has really been an eye-opener? Uh, doctor, this, this truth that we have been taught this week is an eye-opener. And this is the kingdom messages that is lacking in our churches. Okay. Uh, because for somebody to know the truth, first of all, God, Christ is the truth. Yes. Jesus said, I am the truth and the yeah, way the life. and the life. Yes. So, Jesus is the truth. So, in our churches, we are not taught, we were not taught the truth, the power of the truth, that truth himself, that Christ is truth himself, irrespective of whether somebody rejects the but truth. But everybody quotes that place now. Everybody put that place, but the practical uh, the, there's the pra the, the practicality, to, the practicality, the practicality, the practicality, the practicality, the ability to to, to put it in practice mm -hmm. is very rare. We are just uh, a nation, a continent to quote to quote scripture. <laughs> we just quote it. Even you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. We just wake up and quote it. Without putting it into practice, into without putting it, putting putting into it into practice. practice. So this is a kingdom a kingdom message. As a believer, if 
if somebody just gave his life to Christ yes. and is exposed to this kind of truth, mm -hmm. that person would do a lot in the, in the kingdom of God than so, so many people who are wasting their life 20 years in the churches because they have not been exposed to this, to this truth. Because once a believer know, knows the truth, because the Bible says once you know the truth, mm -hmm. you, don't, you just go and sleep. Once mm -hmm. you know the truth, you you meet the demons. Your is to cast them out. Once you know the truth, you don't have to defend yourself. Once you know the truth, and another thing about this level of truth is is this truth. There is a uh, what patience. Yes. Nobody can have patience. You cannot have patience and present this kind of truth to anybody. So that is this message is what is lacking is the ingredient that is lacking in the body of Christ. Thank you. Anybody wants to add to that? What is the concept of the truth that you have been exposed to, or have you, you know, what kind of Christianity have you have the truth be really be? Because it will give you a lot of peace if you really know this truth. Yes. Um, for me, the truth wasn't preached in the church because um, church and Christianity was preached to me or taught to me in the sense of mystical and um, the things that we don't understand and the things that we do understand, they are law rather than the truth. So there was no truth shared. It was more the truth like um, Christ. The laws. Yes, the laws. it's more laws that this is how you should do and you have to do this. If you don't do this, then... You know, you're and not religion. Yes, and you're not a child of God, or this would happen to you. And then also the constant drumming in of the negative aspect of life, you know, making you believe in something so that you can be dependent. I think um, the truth for me, from what everyone is saying and what I've been hearing, is self sufficient. So yes. it doesn't need anybody's approval, it doesn't need anybody's yes. support, it doesn't need anybody's income, or, yes. you know, if you think of it in that sense. So, um, and they don't want you to be self-sufficient. It's just like pastors that, for example, preach in churches and say, give and it shall be given to you. Yeah. So what's your problem? Why are you there asking people to be given to be bringing money to church? You say, give and go, go and practice it. <laughs> <laughs> if you really, if that is the truth and you believe it, go and practice it now. So why do you need my money? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> If you really say you believe it, hey, go and practice it. So, and also the truth has logic <laughs> to it as well. So they don't want you to think logical because um, religion is not logical. If it's logical, then you're not going to follow it at all. So um, I think that the truth, like you said, it speaks for itself. But we don't think about it that way because you're bound to a God and that God you ha is a mystical God. So... Um, the way it works is that everything is mystery. We kind of live day by day without, without that assurance, even though we should have the assurance. Okay, why should pastors be saying, don't go and to another man's church or don't go and listen to another person? If I'm talking the truth, the person, you, you, it will be clear now. When I listen to other people, I will know he's inferior to this now. Yeah, because they don't know the truth themselves. Maybe that's not the truth. I'm preaching. Okay, what will you say about that question? Um... About the last one or the one before? Any one you want. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, why should I be talking about the one before when I ask the one after? Yeah, no, because to me personally, I don't understand it. I don't understand why people, why a pastor would say to another person, you can't go to that church. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So Yeah, what is the truth, the concept of the truth that has been preached to us? Yeah, the concept of oh, truth. How did you know? What kind of, what was truth? This thing, this week, what I see, what, what what is it in the sense of your Christianity and the truth that has been preached to you? Mm -hmm. Yes, so I know these teachings. So to me, it was preached already. I was preached. I was preached to about the truth, but it was more in a set, in an obligatory way. So I had. Then that's to, not the truth now. Yeah, but this is the way I experienced it. I was told to, you know. I was told that the truth will set you free and that you have to believe in the truth. So I was forced to believe this, but I didn't have any example. I didn't have any way of really putting this into practice in my life. All I had was just to believe it and somehow, somehow believe it, just try to believe it. But there was no help to really make this part of my life every day. So I 
I uh, to me. So what is, is happening to you this week? To me, this is new. This is uh, eye opening because it shows me how we have underestimated the truth, the power of the truth. I wouldn't have considered the truth really as so vital in my life before because I just think about people gathering together at church and trying to fortify themselves and trying. It's like you're going to a battlefield and you're using just small, small guns, you know, to fight against everyone else, even though you have this really big weapon that can, you know, vindicate you. And you're not aware of this. And that's not even a weapon that you use to fight against people, but it's something that gives you the victory already. So it's just, to me, very mind-blowing. I can't even... I really had to go back to re-listen and to really understand how deep and how, fort, how, how strong this truth actually is. And it gave me so much peace that I really... I don't have to worry about anything because if I'm so convinced about what I believe in, there's nothing I have to fight for. There's nothing, no, nothing I have to prove to anyone. Because exactly. at the end of the day, exactly. the truth will prove it, it itself. Yep. And exactly. there's one thing also I had to think about, which is there are some people who think that, and this, is, this was me, who think I found such a treasure. I found something that is so precious and I want everyone to know about it. So I try everything to talk to people, to convince them, to you know, try over and over and over again. But if and I, I tell myself that I do this because I love the people, but really, if I really love them, the test, the greatest test for me to really show that I love them is for me to leave them, leave it up to them to choose if they really want to follow what I'm saying or what I believe in. So this was also really... Or to, or to keep on leaving the truth for them to see. Exactly. Not just to, for them to hear the truth from you, but to see you demonstrating the truth to them. For yeah. example, if I tell my neighbors that uh, Jesus is the truth, and you know God is the truth, is the way, and they say, okay, okay, okay. But when I begin to demonstrate the lifestyle of Christ mm -hmm. with love, covering them, and they are seeing the truth. I could overwhelm them with the truth mm -hmm. on daily basis. So I don't need to talk anymore. Yeah. That truth who overtake them sooner or later. Yeah. It's also a sign for me that if I let the person choose, if I give them the freedom of will that they have and I give them the benefit of the doubt, it helps. It, I acknowledge that they are also a human being, that they deserve That's respect good. and that they That's are equal good. to me, that they have the same right to choose because I also had the right to choose. I yeah. had the right to choose my own mm, belief. Mm. So why wouldn't they have the, the same right? Yeah. So that's yeah, that's really mind blowing for me. So it's very freeing. Yeah, so who is there? Just uh success. What do, what was the concept of truth the, the way you knew it from church okay. before now and what is this week doing to you? Thanks Pastor. The concept of truth um the, uh, uh been presented to us that was presented to us growing up especially in africa is that uh it was that of a mixed message actually because on one hand they could tell us that christ died for us and christ is powerful and christ has all the power and everything but yet then we still have to <laughs> pray against some small small demons, demons and some <laughs> small small and they still have to tell us that these things you have to just pray about them because if you don't pray they can truncate they can so that can destroy you. Can destroy. So that is was very very confusing. It left a lot of us with so many questions. So if Christ is truly powerful, then why do we have to? And these demons, you say they are not relevant. But then if we have to do service of two hours, we spend like an hour and a half <laughs> praying against demons and um, their powers and what they can do and all those things. Like so, it was more of a mixed message. I left it rendered the um, true gospel of Christ very powerless. Because people now had the consciousness, the, the consciousness of the devil and everything, whenever anything was happening, if um, the electricity company took light, it's the devil. If there was no water, it's the devil. If it's raining too much, it's the devil. The streets are flooded, it's the devil. So that everything was just, the country is not moving forward, it's the devil. Yeah. So that left the consciousness of the devil in everything. So, but what this truth has done to all of us this week, or what it's doing to us, is that it solidifying the true work of Christ. It's saying that truly Christ is powerful, and because of that, nothing else is relevant. We can believe that. We can go to sleep. 
We can take the word of God to the bank and we can cash it is good. That we don't have to uh, doubt what God has said. The true ultimate um, test that we believe what God has said is that we practicalize it, that we live it. And that was what Pastor was saying, that when he went to his village in Nigeria, he had to show them practically that Christ is powerful. You know, so it's not about um, what you read. I think one of the earliest things that struck when I met Pastor, one of the earliest things that struck me the most about him is the fact that he said, I believe, you know it, but I believe it. He said, that is the major difference between you and me and the rest of you. He said, you know if I'm, all of this, you can read about them. But me, I'm not just reading, but he said, I believe them. If the word of God says, go and walk on water, I believe it enough that I will go ahead and do it. And I don't have But you just know it in your head. I just know it and I quote it. I can quote it. I can <laughs> preach it. I can preach it. I can say it. I can write anything on it and all of that. But when we believe it actually, we find out that this is very simple. It's very, very simple. Because when the word of God says it, then we take it, we believe it, and we go ahead and act. And on nothing it. else matters. And nothing else matters. That is exactly the truth. So it is believing that what God said is true. God says it's the truth. God said God's words is true. God's words are true, and we believe them to be truth, and then we act on them, and we get results. Now I have another question to all of you. Does that mean that this week is a really an eye opener week for you people? Yes. Pastor. Does that mean that this week of truth that we are saying the power and force of truth? What what does this mean then? You know what is it? What is the revelation to you this week? What what are you getting? What are you people getting? I want to see from your mind. What is happening to you people this week? We hearing all these things, F one after the other. What is happening to you? You people took to could write, people who are watching us uh, on Facebook, please go ahead and join. Write what you are thinking. You know, hearing all this information so much. Because right now, I'm just doing one message. As far as I'm concerned, this is all one message. And I see I have 20 others coming. 20 hours of other, of other aspects of truth. that I'll be there. Right now, I'm just talking to you about the level of truth for one week. I see I have 20 hours of other truth, other aspect of the truth. This is just the level. So what is, do you, maybe, are you, are you getting to know more about truth in one way than before, or what is happening? Tell me your experience. What is going on in your heart this whole week about what the truth? What is going on in my heart is that uh, this week I have been able to see the picture of that Africa and Nigeria will be a better place mm -hmm. because of this this truth this truth that we have been told is encapsulized in the the kingdom message yes. this is the kingdom message yes. and this is the foundation foundation class message for every churches for every yes. believer yes. this message if we teach this message just Three months and unleash people. If we unleash people with this message, into the, into the world, they will take, they will take every sphere of, of, of their influence because of this truth. Because, because of the lack of truth and half truth that we have, we have been taught in Nigeria and in Africa, many of us were imposed. We were the truth was imposed on us. So now that we have been able to see the truth encapsulated with the kingdom of God, with love, with empathy, with peace, we will give our our we will give our truth with suggestion, with love, with empathy, and also the way Africa is now is because truth has been told to our fathers by our mothers. Mm. But the culture said, women, women keep quiet. Mm. Women, you cannot say anything. But Africa would not rise, or Nigeria would not rise, without the involvement of women, without their voice being heard. Mm. Europe that we are staying is being built by women. Mm. They, the system is run by women. Yes. Even Belarus that I came from, every place, we, women rule everywhere. Mm -hmm. They contribute constructively. So I'm saying that this, this truth that I have been received, I would translate it to, to, to people also. And it's not just me. It's me and my household. 
So, Doctor, thank you so much yes, for this. And it message. was very interesting to hear what what is what your people experiencing because the same thing. People on the Facebook also are writing what what has this deal week done to them, and it's interesting to know because I don't even know what you people are feeling. For me, this is the way I've always lived, and I'm surprised that you people are excited about this. And I'm saying, okay, now I'll get it. It means that it's not just you people who didn't know this. Maybe many more people out there that didn't know too. So any other person to want to say that, talk okay. about their feelings, about their impression? So I want to say that I, I feel like I love God even more. I oh, just love him so much more since I know the depth of liberty and freedom that he brings. Hmm. And I am so convinced that everyone in this world is able to love this kind of God. Mm. You know, if they know who he is, if they know how he is, if, if they know their his character and the freedom and the peace that he brings. So to me, I see it as part of my assignment to, as my, as part of my assignment to um, to reveal this God to the people who especially wow. don't believe in God at all. All those people who believe, you know, that they don't need God, atheists and people, you know, who are intellectuals and all these kind of people who are so convinced about their own truth. I want to, I feel, you know, assigned to go out there and to talk to them, to show them this kind of God, this God that I'm sure they don't know of. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, even if I, who has been in church all my life and who's been talking about this God, but... I, my, I believed in my heart that he can't be the God that I felt like he was. But mm. I didn't have the understanding. I didn't have the words. I didn't have the practicality to really explain and showcase this God to people. And now I feel like I have the equipment, really, to go out there and to really show to the world who this God is. So to you, truth is God. God is truth. Yes. That's what you discovered this week. Yes. He's truth and he's... He's, he's liberty, he's freedom, he's love. And I don't think there's anyone who can reject this in the world. Yes. So We have not presented them Jesus the right way most yeah. of the time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so in your heart, are you feeling excited or joy or peace yes. or what? I feel, I feel so excited. I feel peaceful because I know even if I go, even if I give my all and I really go out with the truth, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, you know, what people will say or not, because the truth will take care of this. Yes. So even if they decide not to accept him, mm -hmm. if they decide what to do whatever they want to do, I know for myself that this is not my assignment. I'm not there to judge them. I'm not there to <laughs> force them. I'm just there to give them this truth that I also was given to. So, you know, that's all I need to do. And that's why I feel no pressure. I Amen. feel, Amen. you know, just free to do it and... Do it with joy. Do it with love. Wow. So Jesus, Christianity is becoming more attractive then? Yes. Okay, anyone else wants to add to that? Yes. I want to say that um, this week has actually... Yeah, what's going on in your heart? Yes, I, I, I think that this is described um, the relationship with God to me and how God is. It described creations to me, the beginning and the end. Everything that was very uh, much like mystical or unexplained, even uh. in the Bible, was clear from this teaching personally. I think that this is what God um, created us for and also the equipment, uh, how he's equipped us for this world. You know, right from the beginning where um, we tell yourself the truth, where you say to yourself, this is the truth about myself. That, for me, is mm -hmm. the beginning, you know, <laughs> creation. You're creating yourself. Mm. Because for you to be able to tell yourself that this is the truth, and you're looking at yourself about yourself, that you're creating something, you're just starting. And then when you move on to look around your world, you look at everything around your world, and you know the truth, and you say, okay, this is happening about this person, but I will tell myself. Not even go to the other person. Tell myself. I know that's the next stage. I think maybe that's when God started to create things in the world as well. So all the steps for me is the creation, is everything that is in the Bible, is everything that God tried to tell us that I personally think that I wasn't listening, you know, where I have given you everything, I have created everything for you, 
this life I've equipped, I've given, I've put all the equipments that you need for you to operate. But you have to, you can do it, do it in free will and allow other people to do it in free will. So even free will itself makes sense to me. Because I've always thought that why would God create us and then give us free will? So, but this truth allowed me to realize that it is necessary and it demonstrates that in everything that he does, everything that he's given us. So for me to even be a human being that, um, that op I, I feel like the only way now that I can be a human being is to operate in these five, five, four levels. That if I don't operate in these four levels, I'm not human. I'm not a human being. I'm not a child of God. I'm not a Christian. I don't know God. I don't know people. I don't, I'm, I'm alien to, to, do, to what Bio God. Masses. Bio and, yeah, masses. and also, I am in opposition with God. Yes. So anything else means that I'm yes. in opposition with God. Yes. So the other why, side of God. Yes. So I need to really work hard on a daily basis to practice each step to actually transform myself. Because otherwise, I'm nothing less than uh, the opposition of God. Thank you so much. There is somebody here, Olumu Iwa Obadun, saying, according to Luke 18, 1, uh, Matthew 17, 21, that DSA, please, prayer is important, or oh, please, prayer is needed. Okay. You know, I don't know we, who out of the two of us knows what prayer means. And since you believe that prayer is important, you show me what you have done with prayers, and I will show you what I have done with prayers. Okay? Go and listen to my series on prayers. I have, go to YouTube, maybe you don't know. I have a YouTube page. It's called Sunday Adelaide Official. All right? And one of the series is called Prayer Series. Go and listen to my message on prayer. You will know that you don't need to tell me that I know prayer is important. Okay? <laughs> you, but we, we, what, maybe you don't have the understanding of what prayer means. What you call prayer might not be what prayer means. So let's find out who is teaching who. So if you are my teacher... You prove to me that you deserve to be my teacher. Then I will listen to you. Prove to me. Show me the fruits of your, of your prayers. Maybe I will believe you. Maybe I will follow you. But I don't need to show you anything. My life, everything about me shows the fruit of my prayers. So I know what prayer means. I know prayer is important. Go and listen first of all to what I believe about prayers. Go and listen to my series about prayers before you could tell if I know prayer is important or is not important. But when it comes to demons, forget about prayers. Walk in your authority. Walk in your position. And walk in the truth. That itself is enough that will give you victory over demons. Who is the one to talk about? Yes. So what um, the teaching of this week on truth has done to me personally is that it has made me understand the greatest weapon that I have. That truth is my greatest weapon, and it has also shown me how to use truth as my greatest weapon. So I'm not hammering truth on people's head. I'm not trying to make converts. I'm not trying to show people how foolish or how stupid they are. <laughs> but rather, I just want to let the truth. Truth is like putting, um, like the way I see it is like putting sugar somewhere, and then the ant will come around, uh, around it. So, truth is my greatest weapon. That is what I've learned. That um, the greatest thing that I have to, I have the greatest possession I have, the greatest weapon I have to fight in life is truth. And then um, I learn now how to use it, how to use the truth effectively, such that um, the, it can have its free course and it can have its free way. So, that's the, the very striking thing for me personally. Okay. Any other person want to say anything about that? No. Um, I just want to say, I've been really thinking about um, everything that's been said today, and what I've concluded is that the truth, the fourth level of truth that Pastor has shared today actually can probably end every war and every kind of argument in the world, because this kind of truth allows us to love each other, because the battle is not ours, and vengeance is not ours. When we can understand that vengeance is the Lord's, 
what we understand then is that but there we are, quote it yes we quote it mm-hmm. that yes. vengeance is the law but we don't teach it we don't te- we don't break it down and i think that when vengeance is the lord's well when vengeance is ours there's always a winner <laughs> But there's there is always war. a winner and there is, there's a loser. Uh, because there is war. But when there is vengeance is the Lord's. When vengeance is your parents and you are the kids, yeah? No one is a loser. Mm. No one is a loser. Because you learn something. You learn how to work together. You learn how to see each other in a different light. So I'm I'm realizing now that this kind of truth is far beyond even our small problems. This this truth, if if studied well, can actually be applied to so many conflicts around the world if we can understand that it's not mine to win this battle it's not yours to win this battle but actually we're on the same team mm. and the battle isn't ours i think that that's what i've learned so far today brilliant brilliant anybody want to add anything let me read some of the comments here shioma says jesus never prayed about any demons he just cast them out yeah that's true uh Ziana Melin says, Amen, hallelujah, thank you, dear. <laughs> well said, yes. Uh, Princess Aditola said, prayers without result is a joke. Jane Munsaka said, through this message, the word of God has become very, very real to me. You see, this week of truth has brought the word of God to reality. And I can boldly believe and depend on it. I don't have to be afraid as long as I'm telling the truth, for it always prevails. That's so true. Uh, okay, Amarashi Jerry said, this is a summary of what Christianity is about. Hmm. I feel peace. I feel joy. I feel excitement. And so much more in love with God for this week. Now I'm constantly shaking myself on the basis of the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Moro Lake Iroye says, Why, 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 why adding this truth being taught like this? I came from a polygamous family. And always had to live with the fear that somebody is always cooking something to destroy me. So it means we have, we take the, it means, even though it's written in the Bible that even if they are cooking something to hurt you, that nothing will hurt you. The Bible already said that. So we are not taking the word of God as truth anymore. Just quoting it because I said it before. We just know it as knowledge, not as truth. Because if you know it's the truth, you don't even need to worry yourself about who is cooking and who is not cooking. You know, in Nigeria now, people tell me that if you have a business that's going on for you, that you better don't tell anybody anything. Because they are afraid that somebody will hear and put something and uh, make it bad. So witchcraft will make it bad. Or if you go to your village, you don't want anybody to touch you or hug you. Because you are afraid somebody will touch you with witchcraft and destroy you. And you are a Christian. So you believe more in those witchcraft things that in your own Christianity. Matthew says, the truth is everything. Jesus is the truth. When we walk with Christ, then we walk in the truth. Yep, Matthew has song said that. Olujide says, I have always conscious, I have always been conscious of evil people, <laughs> you see, that they can kill me. <laughs> Even as a Christian, eh? I'm sorry. But I have been delivered today. Thanks, DSA, for this message. <laughs> Adorable said, I have come to understand that the truth I know should never be imposed on others or else that is witchcraft. That is so true. And to have confidence in the truth to vindicate itself in my life. Yep. Priska Gold, my son just asked me why I am a Christian. Or is it because I was born in a Christian home? I tried to exalt, but was empty, you see? That's why you need to know the truth, you see? Bukola Adenuga, I have learned to place the truth as the final authority in my life. Wow. Jane Munsaka, I have come to understand the power of truth. As a result, I will try to stand for the truth in whatever I 
do I, I do, knowing that the Lord is with me, for he is the truth, love, and light. Beautiful. Uh, Anastasia said something very great. He said, so far, with what I have learned from the levels of truth, number one, truth is pure. Number two, two truth is beautiful. Number three, truth is freedom. Number four, truth is compassionate. Amazing. Truth is beautiful. I have to learn that one too, what you have said. Number one, truth is pure. Number two, truth is beautiful. Number three, truth is freedom. Amazing. Number four, truth is compassionate. So she gave out. <laughs> so in summary, truth sets you free personally and allows freedom to the other person. You are not just caring about your own freedom. Mm. But you care about the freedom of the other as well. <laughs> Okay, Priska said, I just quoted the scriptures without actually believing because of the doctrine of culture. This week has exposed the real truth, the work of God, of Jesus Christ for me, that I need not fear, but fear what Jesus has to say. He's the final authority. Shinwe says, I'm repositioning myself for the truth. My understanding of this message is building confidence, my confidence. To challenge the untold truth. Hmm. Kingsley James, thank you, man of God, for the unveiling of the truth of God's word. A lot of preachers have been preaching the wrong message for ages. And as the last person who spoke rightly said, such messages as left believers with demon consciousness than Christ minded uh, Christ consciousness. Yeah. Alice Obazi says, Yes, I'm getting to know the truth in a different way. Winnie da Silva can't wait. God is bringing me answers. She wants to listen to the 20 remaining messages. Uh, Zia, Ziana Melin, this for me is confirmation and vindication. I'm peaceful right now. Whoa. Olujide said, today's message is revolutionary for me. Joyce Arrow, oh yes, the truth we have learned this week has solidified the power that is in Christ and in his word. Amarashi, the practicality of the gospel is what we have not been taught in the Nigerian churches. We've been taught to recite and recite the scriptures and that's all. Mm -hmm. Adiola said, you are right, Dr. Success. They rendered the gospel of Christ powerless by elevating the power of demons. Yep. She says, truth is loving your neighbor as yourself. This series has exposed the errors and deception in presenting the gospel of, to the world that has hurt and made a lot of people turn away from God. This truth, kingdom truth, is the weapon and strategy for peace. Winnie da Silva said it was the doctrine of man versus the doctrine of Jesus, which is the truth. Thank you, everybody. We are going to be back tomorrow. We come on two times a day tomorrow. That will be uh, Kingdom Fruits tomorrow. And then we'll come back to continue number five. This number five level of the number fifth level of truth will be discussed tomorrow. Thank you, everybody, for contributing. Thank you so much.